come back to painting and decorating. And finally, it's the day we do the wallpapering. And to be honest, it's always an exciting day for me because the rest of the job has usually been finished and you're about to do the feature wall. Um, you don't know what paper you're using. So it's pretty exciting. Um, so first thing, I'm going to cover my bench because the bench gets used for everything. But when it comes to putting a finished paper up, I like to have it perfect for every customer. So I'll just do that quick. And all I'm using is some lining paper and some masking tape. So I'm just going to quickly do that. Well, that's the bench covered. And I've actually gone and put some measurements up the side to make it easier. Quick look at the gear you're going to need. Tape measure, plumb bob, pencil, usually a hard lead is best. I've got the paper hanging brush, the scissors, some overlap adhesive and some paste. Depending on what paper you're putting on, you have to change what type of paste you use. In bathrooms or kitchens, you want something that's better for condensation. Um, heavyweight vinyls, you need some ready mixed paste for heavyweight vinyl papers. Yes. You also need a little brush for your overlap adhesive. Also got a blade and a straight edge if I need it. All depends on what type of paper you're actually using. Um, I've also got a clean bucket of water and a cloth and a rubbish bag. So mix me paste up. What you want to do is check all your batch numbers and the reference number. Um, make sure they're all the same and then actually look at the colour we call this colour shading make sure the colours look the same now once you've done that you can check out your pattern and on this the pattern is 53 centimetres repeat so you could get a lot of waste with this paper depends on where you start the pattern at the top of the wall and then where it ends at the bottom of the wall because if you're unlucky and it ends wrong you can end up cutting off 53 centimeters of your paper to get the pattern sitting right back at the top sometimes you're better off trying to you know um, spread it out on the wall so you can get a better cut and you, you're, waste, you're not wasting as much paper. Well, let's have a look at the pattern. Now, looking at that pattern, it doesn't really matter too much where I cut through it because no matter where it cuts, it goes through all the, the, the leaves. So where I start it at the top isn't going to be a problem because it won't, won't look out of place. When it's actually on the wall, again, it's not going to matter too much where you start this because with it being so random, it doesn't matter how you try and set your wall up, starting in the centre of your chimney breast or whatever. It'll look random, no matter what you do. So that's a good thing about this paper. You need to work out where your paper's going to lie. Um, because the last thing you want when you're papering is to go around the corner and you end up with a piece that is just impossible to put on because it's that small. Um, 
So, starting, because we've already determined it doesn't matter where we start with this paper because of the pattern. Certain patterns you might want to start in the centre to try and work out the pattern neat around either side. But again, you don't want to be leaving yourself with small strips that are impossible to put on or stick down. So, coming from this side, I've already worked out that leaving a bit of waste to cut off, that keeping to that, by the time I get around here, I've got a strip that is about 10 centimetres, which is just no good for an edge. Waste of time. So, what I'm going to do is on this first bit, I'm actually going to start this first length. So, I cut off. Not half of it, but about leaving three quarters of it, cutting off about a quarter. So then your next length just sits in nicely to the, and then again, that'll be a full length with a little bit of an off cut coming round to the, which that just leaves me there now. A good two or three inches to play with. Um, so then two or three inches, take two or three inches off that one, back to there. Then as I come along, you might not be able to see me, but that finishes perfectly. So my first piece is going on here and I'm gonna plumb a line down. I'm gonna go mark on the wall, 13 and a half inches. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the deepest part. Um, usually you only have to make one mark, but you have to find out where the deepest part of the wall is. Because there's no point in putting your mark on the shallowest part, plumbing your line, and then the wall goes in a bit. So by the time you've put your paper on, you're missing a bit at the top or something like that. So always find a bit of the wall which dips in and then take your mark off that one and then plumb your line and that way you only have to make one mark so I'll go and show you what I mean looking at the wall I've worked out that this top bit is the bit which dips in so that's furthest out so taking your measurement of 13 and a half inches, make a little pencil mark, and then taking your, your plumb line, and because I've got mine with me, I can plumb my line straight off. You can use a spirit level, you can use a laser. I use my plumb line because it's in my back pocket. Seconds. Makes your job a lot faster. So we've plumbed the line and we're ready to sort the paper out. I've measured the wall and the wall was seven foot, but I need a little bit of overhang, top and bottom. So I'm gonna do it at seven foot, five inches. So I've got enough to play with. Opening your paper up, usually what I do is I'll cut off the first foot of the roll. And that's because it's been shrimp wrapped round. So I never really like to use that bit. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Right. You want to open your paper face up so you can see any marks on the paper. Taking it down to a six foot mark. And then I know back to this mark that's going to be seven foot. So all I need to do is measure 
five inches. Doesn't have to be perfect. You trim, you're, you're trimming off the paper. Right? Take the measure back in the pocket. Now, this time you're looking for the pattern. With it being a repeat at 53 centimeters, just look up one edge and that will uh, you'll be able to see where it is. Now, there is a bit of waste on that. Again, I've not tried working it out because I've got enough paper to do the job. I'm not bothered about too much waste. So just make sure the pattern lines up perfectly with the shad. I'm just going to cut myself three lengths for the time being. There's plenty for me. Always make sure you're keeping your paper straight on the bench. Or, you know, best you can. Now, possibly might get another length out of this, so I'm going to have a look. off the bottoms, not the tops I should say, make sure they're all in line, flip it over, make sure they're straight on the bench, you've got your edge there straight on. Now what I like to do at this point is mark the top of my paper. So when I open it, I always know where the top is. And I like to put a line all the way across. It's just habit, and I do it on every length. Uh, but what it means is if I ever cut half my paper, I always know which is the, um, the machined edge, just by looking at where the line is cut. So, yeah. so So then, once you've done that, you need to take the memory out of the paper because it's been rolled up. Makes life easier. Started at one end, roll them back on themselves. Press jet, press down lightly. too much about the way it bends and marks because when it dries out all that will disappear the main thing you've got to be careful of is marking the front or putting a crease in the front so that really does damage the paper put them all in the centre of the bench Take 
taking your first piece, offer it up to that top edge. And then once you've pasted that top edge, you pull it down to the bottom edge. And so we're ready to paste that now. So this paper, paste it straight up. There's no soaking time. Always make sure you're pushing away off the paper. Don't pull back because you'll get paste under the edge of the paper. Bristles that you brush in it, take them out. first fold always put it more than half so you know which is your top fold and which is your bottom fold Now this first piece, I've got to cut this because there's no point. There's no point in trying to put it on the wall and having so much to cut off. So I've got to cut off a certain amount. Always make sure the edge on your plumb line is not the edge you're cutting off. Make sure it's the right way around on your bench because I know that line's going up that way. I need to cut off that way. So I'm going to 13 and a half, that's what we measured from the wall out. So to allow me to cut off, I've got to have at least 15, because you don't want to be messing about with small pieces of paper. But that's how much you're cutting off. So pulling your paper to the edge of your bench, Finding your 15 mark pencil, edge your tape measure, straight up. And then you can trim that off using your scissors, keeping the bottom edge of your scissors on the bench. ready to go straight up that. I'll show you this piece and then I'll show you the more difficult pieces and then the finished wall. So on your steps, taking your fold, I usually sometimes rest it on my foot so it doesn't just slap onto the floor. Right and then first finding your plumb line and you put the edge of the paper on the plumb line first, leaving yourself the overlap at the top so you can cut off. 
making sure you get no paste on your hands. And just let it lie onto that plumb line. And once you're satisfied, taking your paper handing brush, just spread it out from side to side. And double check your plumb line. Just show you trimming the top bit because basically the bottom bit's the same. There's different ways you can actually trim paper. You know, you can use a, a blade and you can use your scissors. You can mark paper in different ways. You can use a, a screwdriver sometimes so you don't, you just leave a crease. Uh, you can sometimes use your pencil as long as you cut the pencil mark off when you've finished. This job is quite difficult because uh, it's all shapes, all the pitch rail is different shapes. So I'm going to try and mark it with my scissors on the underneath edge of the picture rail. Now it works sometimes because you peel it back and you can see a line going up the back of the paper. So that's really good that I'm going to follow that. No rush, just take the time. You know, always fold your paper up so you're not getting paste on everything in the bin. Back there. Perfect cut. Absolutely perfect. Now I'm going to wipe off the paste off that picture rail. Spread that out there. That's not too bad at all, that. So, this one going down the edge of the paper, I'm not going to try and mark the back of it this time. I'm going to use my pencil. But what I'm going to do is allow my finger on the back of the pencil. And I'm going to make sure when I put the pencil mark on the wall, I am going to cut off the pencil mark so the final cut will be where I want it. So practice makes perfect with doing this. You've got to have a... So pencil mark on, pull it back, and now I can follow that pencil mark. making sure I cut it off. Makes life easier. To there, and then I'm going to show you the cut. Paste off the wall. Always use a clean cloth, clean water, no detergents. You don't want any residue left off anything, just clean, warm water. Right, you can have a look at that. I'll finish the bottom in a minute. But, uh, Yo, perfect cut. Not easy, but it's a good way of doing it. First piece up. It is looking quite good actually. Hmm. So the next piece is quite straightforward. That should be a full length in there. Let's just have a quick look. That no, but it doesn't matter. There's a piece, but we did work it out that we would have pieces because the last thing I wanted 
was a little piece around the other edge. So that's not too bad at all. That. Right then, so next piece, full length, and then I'll show you that other bit there. Second piece up. So that gap I thought I'd have on the other side, I've actually got it on this side, uh, but it doesn't matter. My working out sometimes is never perfect, um, but it has worked out for the best because this side is better to put it on because it's hidden when you come into the room. So I'm going to paste the next length and then I'm going to measure this gap and cut a piece off, fill in the gap with a little bit of a return of a couple of millimetres. Then I'm going to work my length and the width of the paper I've got left, plumb a line, and then working off that line, work back round to here. Trying to get the paper, adjusting the paper to get the pattern in line. Because if you start here, try and work that way, you're never going to be plumb on this side, which is the main chimney breast, which you want to be perfect to carry on your next length. But I'll show you some of that. That little strip's in there now. You can see how much return there is there. Now, as you go up, that deviates. You know, it dips in there, comes back out here, you know, and then right at the top, starts dipping in here, and then it's dipping in, dipping in, literally, till it's almost nothing at one point, and then back up again. Um, so, you've got to be careful how much you give when you're going around corners. Um, the pattern is what it is, you can't help what the pattern's going to turn out like sometimes in corners. You can try your best to overlap paper, but no matter what you do when you overlap paper, you're always going to be missing the sentiment. So matching patterns is very difficult in corners. So the next bit is on the bench. I'm going to measure the width of that. Work round with a little bit to trim off. And then plumb my line. And then working from here round. Try and get my pattern right. And then that's pieces on. And then I'm off again. Right. You can have a little look at that as it's going up. There's no easy way about this. And it makes it more difficult with the camera, and I'm trying to let you have a look. Now, working out your pattern of where you cut it off, you can generally tell whereabouts you need to be. So, I know, we were cutting off about an inch and a half. I'm just going to let that sit down the plumb line a bit. And before I do any cuts, I'm just going to see where that lies. Now looking at it, I know straight away I need to go up slightly. Now that'll do. I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to pull this back. Still on my straight line down the wall. Where's the plumb line? Now, finding the corner, you have to put some relief cuts in there now. Two or three, four or five. <laughs> Every corner's different. So then once you've done that, again, always making sure you're on your plumb line, you can just feed that down. 
like so. And now, we'll just have a quick look, final adjustment, down just a touch. See, you're never going to be perfect, because like I say, we've cut a lot of the pattern off. But overall, I'm working out where I want it. And that's not too bad at all, that. Okay. So then, once you've done that, it's generally on the wall. I just need to continue it down this side and do the same cut at the bottom, feeding it round. But what I'll do now is I'll just show you the pattern match, what I've achieved in the corner. So we're nearly ready to pull that out. But let's have a look what I've just done. See? Now that is looking pretty good. It's never going to be perfect. But wow, look at that. No, it's the corner. Okay, so I'll finish trimming that off now. Up there, the relief cut. Following my plumb line down there. You can see, going up. Just needs slightly adjusting. Okay. And before I forget, the uh, overlap adhesive. Squirt a bit out onto your brush. And that goes up where you've overlapped the paper. And then wipe that back with the damp cloth and it's finished. All done. Quick look at that. Not bad. But then again. I am a professional decorator. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Right, so. Next two bits are easy. Just two lengths. One. Two. Which then leaves me a return. So, bang. Straight into the corner. Boom. Done to there and I'll have a little bit of a return on that as well and then I've just got that flat to do which is easy so working out from that corner we're doing well so that's how you keep the line plumb because it's always on the face of the chimney breast that's where you want it perfect So the cuts I've been doing, combination between my scissors, the straight edge and the blade. Sometimes when you put the straight edge on, it doesn't sit quite right. Because this skirting board, it's all shapes, it's like the moon. So sometimes you've got to do it freehand. forget wipe your paste off. Doing well at the minute. Right, next corner. So it's straightforward from here really. I've already got my plumb line there. So it's actually easier than off the other side. So releasing your paper. And find your pattern. That's not right. That's not right. So 
You've got to get your pattern perfect before you make any cuts, otherwise your cuts will be in the wrong place. So I'll find the corner, make a few relief cuts. Kind of want to start being up an inch out and then come to the corner and then work an inch back with your cuts. So it goes round the corner nicely. The trick here is you've got it nice and matched up all the way down and make sure there's no bubbles in that bit. And then I'm going to put this piece, just stick it to the wall without doing anything else to it, just leave it up there. And then coming back down to this bottom bit, keeping your pattern. Good. Release the bottom. Be careful at this point, you don't want to disturb the top too much. Again, fold the pattern down. Once you're satisfied with how the pattern's sitting, we can make some more cuts at the bottom. Again, start an inch out, work to the corner, and then around the corner. To this bit to the top, release that. Here. Now make sure it's on the pattern and it's plumbed, and then usually starting about the centre, just lightly pull that round. And you've got to be gentle with this because you don't want to be pulling the paper so the joints opening up. You want to pull it enough so you know you're getting the bubbles out. Basically slowly work at that. Try to get no wrinkles in this side. wall is out. No matter what I do, this wall is going to be out because the corner is out. But try your best, first of all, to see how it sits. Make sure you in plumbing your patterns are all right. And what you want to do now is with your plumb line, check this edge. Because there is, a, there is another piece that needs going in here. Now, with it being right into the corner, it doesn't matter too much because you can plumb this next piece so that's nice and straight. But what you can do is just double check it. That's really outlines by half inch. So I either pull the top out half inch and have a bubble down that side, which you would have to do depending on what walls you're doing and how much you want it to be plumb, you would have to do it. But because this is right in the corner, you're never gonna see it. It doesn't matter too much whatsoever, even with the pattern. 
the pattern was running out, I'd have to adjust it and possibly just leave a bubble down there because you'd never see it and it would never get disturbed. Um, same as you go all the way down the wall. If you end up having to leave little bubbles on the corners, you're better off having a little bubble than your pattern looking out and looking horrible. Because you know you won't see that bubble. Right, so I'll finish cutting this off. You can have a quick look and then you can see the finished job. Because basically that's it. All finished. Right, one tip is get a decent emulsion paint for your walls and your ceiling because when you come to wipe paste off, if it's a cheap paint, your paint's going to come off with the paste or you're going to be left with all the marks. So, yeah, quick clean up and then I'll show you over the paper. That doesn't look too bad at all, that. Do I like it? No. Do I hate it? No. Can I live with it? Yep. But there you go, that's wallpaper for you. Kind of matches things. You know, that was the brave ground, the brown on the wall. Dulux colour. And I quite like it really. As papers go. That's not too bad at all that. Now if you want it to be more perfect like in one of my brother's videos he shows you how to splice paper around the corner using two lengths rather than just one if you're short on paper you're going to have to do it this way just one length in the corner if you've got loads of paper you can work two lengths to get the corner more perfect but again it is what it is because corners are never straight I do like it. Not a lot. 